In this clip, we will be looking at comparative cognitive mapping as a method to analyze actor perceptions. Let's start with a short story that is often used in classes on negotiation. Two brothers are fighting over one orange. Eventually, their father offers a fair solution. He cuts the orange in half and the boys each get one half. The older brother only uses the zest of his half to garnish a cake. The younger brother squeezes his half of the orange for the juice. Mm. Surely a better deal would have been possible. Strategic actors have expectations about the consequences of their decisions. If we understand these expectations, we can understand their decisions. And if we understand the expectations of different actors, we can perhaps identify better decisions not yet considered by any of them. Cognitive maps offer a structure to map the assumptions of actors. What is causing the problem and what could be effective solutions and why? Organizing these assumptions into a causal diagram helps to put structure to decision making. A basic cognitive map consists of factors and causal relations. If there is a positive relation, an increase in factor A will lead to an increase in factor B. A decrease in factor A will lead to a decrease in factor B. For instance, for a shop, more sales will mean more profit. A negative relation describes a change in the opposite di direction. An increase in factor A will lead to a decrease in factor B. For instance, more cost will mean less profit. The cognitive maps that we use contain four types of factors. Actions show the decisions an actor can take. A shop owner can decide on the quality of items on sale and on their pricing. Goals describe the values of a decision maker. A goal might be to make a high profit. System factors are intermediary factors that help unpack the causal mechanisms involved. For instance, the quality of items in the shop may influence their appeal for customers. Likewise, the pricing of items may influence if the shop can compete with items in other shops. And then there are fourth context factors. These also influence system factors, but they are beyond the sphere of influence of the decision maker. For instance, on a very cold or a very rainy day, there will be less customers in the shop. We can use causal diagrams to capture all assumptions about a complex problem in one large causal map. But what if we would capture the assumptions of different actors in different maps? We would then have a basis for comparison and we can clearly see both differences and agreements in the perceptions of actors. Just think of what you can do with such information. You can see what the key issues are that most actors care about. Or you can see if there are issues that are not on the radar for most of the actors, but which are in fact crucial to a few key players. Or you might see disagreements about the evidence base behind decisions. Such insights can help you to think of ways to build a joint evidence base or to exploit differences in thinking for mutual benefit. Just like the example of the orange with which we started our video. So, in summary, cognitive maps help you to capture the problem perceptions of decision makers. Comparing the perceptions of different actors helps to understand their decisions, helps to identify knowledge gaps or disagreements about the evidence base, and may enable you to propose interventions that are of mutual benefit. The next question obviously is how to construct and analyze these cognitive maps. We will look into this in our next clips.